Hit the button. Jim, what's going on? How are you? Good. How are you? Good day. Good. Good, good. Happy future. I I am in the future. Yes, I was just telling you all about my Monday morning and how it's not going the best. But that's okay. It'll get better. It'll get better. It can't get any worse, right? Now, can, well, you do, can you fix your problem on your own or do you have to get a servicing professional to handle that? No, nah, I need to get a servicing professional. My, my vehicle's not working at the moment. Or well, it is working, but it's got problems. So as a result of visiting repeater sites, which was yesterday, I think <sighs> I went over a couple of big rocks and popped a couple of things that I probably shouldn't have. So it's probably my driving. Anyway, we're talking about... Um, what are we talking about? We're talking about simple, easy to build kit antennas. We're talking antennas. about UMOB, coffee and ham radios. Yes. You got a line of antennas. Um, and by the way, I don't know where T.O. is. If anyone can tell me where T.O. is, let us know because he's not here. So don't know he's where he sketchy. is. sketchy. Let me shoot him a text. And like, he is. I mean, yeah. I know well, I'll send him a message as well. Okay. And um, hello to the channel members that we've got in the chat. There's Jim. Jim's in the chat. Jim's on, Jim's on stream. So... Um, Hello to everyone. So, um, yeah, tell us a little bit about your line of antennas and I guess uh, sort of how it all started, like, you know, who come up with the ideas and and sure. all that sort of stuff. Well, some of it predates me. It's, it's prehistory. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> because the boys had started working on the, the first NFED they did was before I was part of Coffee and Ham Radio. So that was the Artemis. And I know almost no details about the Artemis other than I have one I built um, and it Mm -hmm. works. They, um, so I I think Chuck and Ape and Steve and and, uh, and Dude before I was here came up with the idea and started working on the idea of selling antennas. And the goal is to make a kit with a a, a decent, easy to put together kit that is going to hold up. And our big thing with our kits is the winder because it's not it's not 3d printed like at home with pla or something it's actually mm. professionally done with uh what they call multi-jet multi-jet fusion which sounds really cool i don't know what it means but it sounds really professional and it's like that boo yeah see look at that that's a look at sexy that. beast it does it it does feel a little bit more uh robust than the normal 3D printed stuff like this. She's I don't know if you've done a bend test but I tell you what it would be a hard job trying to break that thing. Yeah, it, it that is PA12 nylon that is not PETG or ASA. Yeah. Um so I can tell you that that has outstanding outdoor heat resistance. Mm-hmm. Um it will not slag down. So that's the problem with Even PLA, in the Aussie sun. Even in the Aussie sun. Mm-hmm. Um, even with P- with PLA especially, it will get sad and start drooping and everything. So we can't use PLA anyway, and we get those professionally done. Um, yep. So that's awesome. And are these the same winder on every antenna? So you've got. So yes, so how many so have you got? You've you've got the and we'll go through them one at a time. You've got the Poseidon, you've got the Aries, you've got mm-hmm. the Apollo, and you've got the Mercury. This is the Mercury that I've got here that I've got to put together. I haven't put okay. it together yet. Same winder um, on all of them. Same winder. Yeah. Yep. So, so um, our yeah. poor guy on the West Coast who uh, is the one who <laughs> ships the kits, there's a limit to how much stuff he apparently is allowed to store in his house before the wife threshold engages. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, he he's perilously close to that threshold at all times. So, yeah, we reuse some parts between designs if we can do it and at so far we have not come up with anything that uh is going to require a different winder now that's not to say we're not going to in the future so the uh, i was just inviting i was just inviting your colleague on so he can talk a little bit about these uh seeing as though uh to's uh missing in action well it, it, it may be hallmark time i i don't know <laughs> it might be too right um the poseidon is our vertical Mm-hmm. And that is, in my opinion, probably the easiest kit to build. It really is. And this is your and, newest one, right? Yes, that is the newest one. And I will tell you, between Ape and I, we have put a lot of wattage through both of ours. We have used the daylights out of it. And he's no, it's not in, Hank. He's in our chat all the time, going, "Man, I love this antenna. I love this antenna. I'm not making that up. It's 
ape telling us how much he loves the antenna that he helped design. So, yes, we got it. We got it. Calm he's, down. He's uh, been he, doing a lot of, uh, I believe he's been doing a bit of testing with this. And um, um, he's, he's told me that it's been working really well. Rumor has it that Ape has been on FT8. Of course, he doesn't have a legal call sign, so we don't really know. <laughs> we don't know what he signs as. <laughs> right. Right. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's, yeah, that's an easy kit to build. Uh, and we provide everything with the kit, obviously. We don't want to see what kind of pants you're wearing or ain't wearing, you know. <laughs> I, sent him, I sent him the link, but he's, 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 he's yeah, he's <laughs> having a moment, I think. I think he's having a moment. He doesn't like to be on, uh, doesn't like to be on stream. Um, ape, ape could be Paul. Yeah. So the so this is a so this is a vertical antenna. So you, yes, uh, we'll go. We'll have a look at your other ones um, after. But this is kind of like a little bit of a unique one. So how are you? When once you've built this, how are you stringing it up? Are you just using like a um, telescopic mast, like a squid pole, or something like that, or a yep. telescopic pole, or from a tree, or something like that? Yes, to all the above. Mm -hmm. What the, length of wire are you using? The vertical element is twenty five feet. And okay. then, so we're shipping 100 feet of, of the silicon wire with the antenna, mm -hmm. silicone wire. Mm -hmm. And that gives you enough for a 25 foot, four inch element, four inches is fold back to make your loop. And four 17 foot radials. And then you'll have, I, I think, I'm not going to math on stream, but I think about eight or 10 feet of wire left. So you could make the radials a little longer if you wanted. So you have enough and how, the radials and um, go ahead. How are you setting? So you've got how many radials was it? Four radials. Four. Or have you got more than that? We, and we, just, tested, it, we tested yeah. it with, um, I, did, I did it with eight and saw zero difference in yeah. the, way, the way it acted. Mm -hmm. um, four radials, 90 degrees apart. Robert's your mother's brother. I'm just saying. It worked just fine. Mm. Mm. And I've been, it's almost all I've been using probably the last six weeks is the Poseidon or the prototype um, of the Kronos, which is the one we're working on now. And it does yeah, great so, with four radials. Well, Paul's saying it could be, if you have a tree, it's a great HOA Heck vertical. Yeah. So uh, limited space, limited space um, antenna. You right. don't need, you only need the one vertical support, right? Yep. And the way I've been putting it up, and I don't know how the boys have been doing it, but I have a telescoping fiberglass mask from, I think, Giga Parts is where I got it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I just have a little piece of paracord at the top, stick the paracord through the loop, raise it up 25 feet. And mine is literally wedged in between limbs in a magnolia tree where my wife cannot tell there's an antenna in the front yard. <laughs> how um, high do you have the feed point of the antenna? Is that sort of, or the, sorry, the winder slash feed point, is that pretty close to the ground or is it? Yeah, four to six inches. Okay. Yeah, I keep, it you... down, I keep it down pretty low. We say six inches. You just don't want to get it up too much higher because then you'll get into elevated and need tuned radials and all that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you can have more radials if you want to, if you want Absolutely. to add on more. Right. Um, I think Callum has a good article on his website dx commander's got a good article on his website which shows um the effects of adding or subtracting right. radials and when you get to a certain amount how you don't really see yeah the curve more improvement the curve i gotta do it backwards the curve kind of goes up like this and then just flattens out mm. and yep. um and i don't know if that's the difference between like a dx commander design i tested this with eight and i tested mm -hmm. it with four and swept it with the rig expert and there was no difference. It was mm -hmm. absolutely no difference. Now, I did not go to to 16 or 12 or 24. I just added, I doubled the number of radials, didn't see any difference. Now, would you say that this antenna, as well as all of your others, they're very easy for uh, beginners to build and to put together? This one is especially. Uh, yep. The... The toroid wind is not complicated. There's no twisting wires and having a primary and a secondary like you do with some of the other, with the other antennas, right? Mm -hmm. you're, you're doing a, a bifiler wind, two wires in parallel, and we're telling everybody eight wraps with, um, with two wires in parallel. The hardest part to this antenna and where I have seen people mess up 
is they get their wires crossed. They they have a wrap that they get them swapped over. So when they go to uh, to hook up the ground lug, the antenna feed line, and then the uh, the center conductor, mm -hmm. then uh, they have a swap wire and they get crazy SWR. Then they tell them we tell them go back and look at your toroid because you got a cross wire and they go oh yep I got a cross wire. So and Lee Isn't and and Ape make a good point both of them you could potentially have less ground loss with more radials. I have no way to measure ground loss, so I just put up four radio, four more, and tested it, and it acted the same for me, and I didn't care. But yeah. I, I just I made a bundle of four radials, and then just with an alligator clip and clipped it on the end, and that's how I tested that. So, yeah, and it depends on your dirt. Yeah, um, I think if you can get yeah, as uh, Eric's saying, number of radials is less important. Total amount of wire on the ground is more important. That's what Callum does with his radials; he bunches them. Um, up right. so that they're shorter, but as far as the amount of wire that is laid down, it adds up. So, uh, right. or it adds up to more wire on the ground. Um, what I was going to show was, and I am showing, is the build instructions, which are all available on GitHub. So you go through step by step here with the the build. This looks like an these look like ape photos. Um, they are ape photos. <laughs> <laughs> I recognise the mat. Um, so it's. You know, easy to follow uh, as you're building and you've also done a couple of videos as well on like winding and, you mm -hmm. know, putting it up right. and I think you've done a couple, Ape's done a couple. I think did T.O. and Chuck, they might have done one or two as well on the various different um, T. models T.O. has you've not got. done one on the Poseidon and, and, I, and Chuck has. Chuck did a complete yeah. build video on the Poseidon. Mm. He might have some of the older ones though for sure. Yes, um, yeah, he has the older ones. He's been in between HF radios and weather and yada, yada, yada with his uh, yep. mobile mobile lifestyle. So really easy to build um, antennas for beginners who are mm -hmm. you know, looking to, to get on the air. So um, the, it's not like you sort of provide a kit and then you're just stuck and you don't really know what's no, going I, on. There's also, you've also got Discord channel, uh, Discord chats in Toads, don't you, in the Toads Discord absolutely. about these antennas. So for... Geez, you offer kits, you offer support. What else do you offer? I don't my offer goodness. my phone number. Just so. <laughs> I, I'd give him Ape's phone number if I actually knew it. Here, call him. Um, yeah. I think uh, the instructions, we, we spent some time on the instructions. Ape wrote the original instructions. Chuck and I reread the instructions. We made some minor changes, I think. Ape did all the pictures. I, I, the only problem with the instructions is that when you print them on a black and white printer, all those beautiful colors disappear and everything is pretty much gray, <laughs> darker gray and really dark gray. But <laughs> um, Yeah, this look how neat that looks. That's definitely an 8 build. That's an 8 build right there. I wouldn't be that neat, yeah. Mine's not. I got judged a lot on my toroid. <laughs> <laughs> Ape's like, well, um, that's not your worst toroid. Thanks, Ape. So there's a pic of it mounted pretty close to the bottom of the uh, the mast. What, uh, what mast are you using, Ape? Because, you know, you won't come on stream, so you better tell us. Uh, <coughs> now, does, we set does up... It, does it come with this? The little... Yes. Um, yeah, yes. okay. So you can slip that over the top of your mast then. That is the whole point of that is... Mm -hmm. that, and that will work with the DX Commander mast and anything that's similar, like a squid pole or um, a jackite pole. There's another one or two Chuck mentioned that 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 is really designed for and the idea is then you can just slide that on top of the mast and take it off the mast when you're done super quick yeah 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 because so at orlando we had we had an early prototype of this antenna set up at the poda get together we did mm -hmm. uh, before hamcation even started and i know kyle was banging out a whole ton of CW contacts on it, I think, on multiple bands. Jason did a whole bunch of um, sideband POTA contacts. There was two or three other people, too. I don't remember who all was using it. But, yeah, we had this thing set up with a uh, with a DX Commander mast at, at Ham, Hamcation. So it fits a, a standard, uh, a classic DX Commander mast, does it? Because you said it was ten meters long, I think the D isn't the DX Commander mast like nine. The classic is nine. Is ten. The classic is ten. Is ten. Okay. Yeah. The Sig nine. The signature nine. Oh, signature nine. Should yes. work. 
Because that'd be nine meters, which is over 27 feet, so it should still work too. Mm -hmm. And leave you enough room that the, you wouldn't be laying on the ground with it. I, I don't have a signature nine. <clears throat> Has anyone tried it or can you use it as like a sloper antenna as well? That so is like a, a question out of my wheelhouse on that one. Yeah, because that would I, be interesting. If you don't have a support that's quite high enough, you could uh, well, use it as a... Well, what I'm curious about is though, the difference is the toroid. So on our NFED half wave, that's a 49 to 1. Mm -hmm. And this is a 4 to 1. So okay, there's Charles. So you've got 200 ohm. It's 200 ohms at your feed at your yeah. uh, feed point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, interesting. Get Chuck on here. I know he's already ate dinner or drank lunch. I'm not sure which. It's California. Well, I'll because <laughs> Chuck can talk as, about an antenna. I'm here to tell you. Seeing as those we can't afford um, the uh, we can't afford the price of of eight because he's just. Uh, He's there. Uh, Tio's running late, apparently. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, eight costs too much. So <laughs> this is eighty four eighty four ninety nine US dollars. Uh, you ship this obviously to the US, Canada. You ship to Canada. We will ship anywhere. Where else do you ship? We will ship anywhere. Mm -hmm. But anybody who is outside the continent of the United States needs to just drop us an email because we don't have it set up for auto overseas shipping stuff because overseas shipping is tricky. The e-com platform we're currently using is kind of a pain in the behind with that. Mm -hmm. So yes, we will absolutely ship to, to Australia, to Canada. And we have, um, several Australians have bought this, a bunch of Brits, Germans, etc., Canadians. Yeah. But, but we I, just handle it it's on designed to be a vertical, but you know ham radio operators, they try to do something that it's not supposed to do. That's the point. It's designed to be a vertical. Has anyone done it the other way? That's what I want to know. See, if it's, it's only 25 feet long, though, so that's going to screw up. The, <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. That too, thing is going to be too, weird to tune. Too, too soon. Too soon, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> um, Colin, oh, I'm trying to catch up with the chat uh colin what size squid pole from haverford here in vk so we have a place here which do poles and actually do um i mean you never mean, used to you'd they mean do like, ham radio you'd poles. like a nine meter one right yes yeah, so they do three five six seven six there you go there's a there's a 10 there's a 10 95 dollars either they one. even do a spike spike holder look at that and that's kind of so jazzy bit small to see on that screen because I haven't zoomed up but uh, yes I reckon oh that's cool you could use one of those so these are uh, I think one these of those. one of these yeah nine dollars cool. I don't think that it hold that's probably too small for a DX commander mass though uh does it got dimensions 80 centimeters nearly a meter long not suitable for nine and ten meter Haverford <laughs> poles yeah that so probably it's probably not going to fit a DX commander. I like the idea of it though. It's pretty cool. Well, have you seen um have you seen Rolly's uh, you know ZL1BQD Rolly, New Zealand Rolly. Yeah. He's um he's got a video on his channel where he uses a bit of PVC conduit pipe and he just screws it in the ground. He creates That'd like work. a Yeah. He creates like a uh, um uh, like a spike out of that and then just puts the the pole over the Sets top. Sets the mast in into the into the pipe. Yep. So eighty-five dollars. We were talking earlier uh, the other day about maybe getting some sort of way to ship them to Australia. So maybe we can work something out there, possibly. The problem with international shipping is the that it's international shipping. So what? It's what I'm trying to say is, is you need an outlet. I I, I, <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> That decision is above my pay grade. I have it some is. input into it, but um, <laughs> the, the only way that that's really going to be effective for you guys is to buy in bulk. And yeah, um, you kind of need a bit of an idea of how many people you need. Sort of like a pre-order yeah. thing where you need to get like ten or fifteen people to say, "Hey, I want these," and then you just yeah. ship them through one person rather than out yeah. several times, right? Yeah. It would be it would be cheaper for anybody in Australia, for example, because I think shipping <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, could use the profits to fix a car. Yeah. That's right. I think shipping to Australia for one antenna is about thirty five dollars. Really? So yeah. It's ridiculous. 
Yes, because a couple mm. of your mates down there in VK land have bought them. And um, I shipped one to him a couple, three weeks ago. And, yeah, it was $30, $35, So this is the one that I've got. This is the linked dipole, which um, I haven't built yet. It's been sitting there staring me in the face and I'm going to do it. But um, You're not at Jason yeah. level of sitting around not building an antenna yet though, right? I don't think I'm at that level. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's I know, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close. How long have I had this? I think I've, I've had it a while. Well, so, I mean, it's been out a year-ish. Well, maybe. actually, sorry, let me go back. So I was going to build the Mercury-linked dipole antenna for mainly um, Poda because it's, you know, a little bit more room to set up and then I can, you know, take it down and disconnect right. it and reconnect it. And you don't, you know, you can you, you can sort of muck around and do that if you've got plenty of space. The thing that I liked when I saw that you guys had a vertical with the Poseidon was is that the limited space so that you could use that oh, yeah. for other things like SOTA and um, even if you're at a park with limited options, um, it's quick and easy to set up. Like Absolutely. Really quick. A tree limb, A tree limb will work just as well as a mast. Honestly, yeah. There's no, there's no need for a mast specifically. I just had one that was convenient. So, yeah, yeah. Well, just a rope and throw it over a tree limb, yep. and you're Absolutely. good to go. The the Lynx dipole antenna that does need um, some sort of support as well. Right. So um, you've got your feed point, which will be up high on the mast, and then you've got your two legs of your dipole coming down. What? Tell us a little bit about this one. That is more of a chuck project of love um he's got some recommendations in there for what bands and it's basically what you want to make the legs Let i think it's find, 10 uh, 20 Charles 10 is, 20 40 uh, chuck is the expert on that one not me by far let me let me uh send Ch uh charles you've got a you've got a link in your in your discord so tio says yes, he's, he's running late he's going to run about an hour late i think that sketchy son of a gun. <clears throat> All right. Um, well, while scroll, we're waiting scroll, for him. Scroll down on that page on the dipole. Mm -hmm. I think we, yeah, 10, 20, 40 is, is what, um, what we, but it's your what choice, we recommend yeah. to build it on. Yeah, and, and you could change it. And like Chuck mm -hmm. says there in the instructions, you could change it up to do 15, 20, 30. So <laughs> three bands of your choice. <laughs> 45 auto, funny you say that it actually was. <laughs> it's sitting over on the bench. It's sitting on the, the to, to build list and to open list. So. And Chuck is saying that it, I can't click the comments. Chuck is saying that a 10, yeah, there you go. That's the one. 10 meter yep. mast will work for pretty much anything. And I think a nine would work too for the Poseidon. Yeah. Um, I believe. So Eric has his Mercury cut with links for 10, 15, 20, 40. Think about buying another and making for seven, 12, 17, and 30. Mm -hmm. How many links can you put in? You can put in it, as many as you as want. As many to. as you want. We mm. ship with enough for those three or four bands, the 10, 20, 40. Mm -hmm. You don't do, will this antenna work for if you want to put extra wire on and run it on, or is this a chuck question, on 160 or 80 meters? It's a dipole. So, yeah, if you want to yeah. add enough wire to do it, it'll absolutely do it. Yeah. What about the um, – the, because so your toroid here is only acting as a one-to-one, -one, mm. right? It's not doing any um, – I You're getting into Chuck Chuck situation yeah. there. That should be a current balance as far as I know. Yeah. I am not the expert on these things. That's You're getting into Ape and Chuck territory there by far. I'm sure Ape John says he has me. a Mercury that does 1,200 watts. Okay. Well, we were talking about that behind uh, behind the curtain backstage. Um, how much power do most of your antennas run? They're mainly around 100 watts. 100 they? watts sideband and 50 watts digital is what we what we typically recommend. Now that being said, um, yeah, four link kits, two per leg. So you can do any combo of bands, 40 and up. Yeah, so it would be much easier to actually say that on stream rather than type it out, I'm sure. Right. I'm just See, wondering look. if he's sitting at the dining table with his wife typing <laughs> on his phone while he's eating his biscuits or whatever he's eating. Because <laughs> he Mrs. Well going to be getting chapped about the phone business right now if she isn't already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, Don, but it was a good segue into talking about power levels of the antenna. 
So um, the um, all three <clears> of them are 100 watts sideband and 50 watts digital, and that's our recommendation and what we sell them as. Um, mm -hmm. That being said, I know there are hams who will push the edge of the envelopes. Some of them whose name rhymes with dim. And, um, <laughs> you know, so far I haven't had any problem with it. So. Yep. So now the other antennas that you've got. So you've got the Air. Now you can tell me about the Aries, can't you? Because that was your era, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all of them except the, uh, the first one, the starting, which yep. we don't sell the Artemis anymore anyway. So yep. the Aries is a 9 to 1 random wire kit. And it uses a 9 to 1 Avi, Balin set up and you get three pieces of wire to wrap the toroid with and um uh, is that a balin yeah balin balance sun balance balance uh, i'm gonna get corrected by somebody if i said that wrong <laughs> i wasn't gonna correct you but that's okay well his name i mean rhymes with ape no he, ape will correct me his, his name sure. rhymes with ape <laughs> his name rhymes with ape yeah, yeah. um so we that kit is designed to have a 41 foot element and then yep. a 17 foot um, counterpoise. And we have actually have two versions of that still. The original the version of the uh, Aries, we sent you enough wire for the 41 foot element and a 17 foot counterpoise. And then because shipping and wire and it made Chuck cut rolls of wire and measure wire, we just started including a 100-foot roll of wire. So we're selling the original Aries with specific amounts of wire for about $5 cheaper, and we call that the Aries Light. It'll still Aries all day. The now the current Aries, and I've only got four or five of the Aries lights on the website. The current Aries comes with a 100-foot roll of wire, so you do you, boo-boo. You can have mm. a you know a longer a longer random wire if you wanted or a m longer counterpoise whatever. Mm -hmm. It's a trifiler winding on that guy. Yeah. And I did not wind mine. Chuck Chuck had pity on me and sent me one that was Chuck wound, which looked like it was a machine done. It was awesome. Chuck Scott, I have been to uh, I have been to the factory where all of yes, these Tom. antennas are shipped from, and uh, Chuck did show me the the way that he measures out the wire. Um, which was very, very scientific, and it's um, it's a <clears throat> one of the best kept secrets in uh, in ham radio. So, right, right. So you got two versions. So you've got what's the difference? Sorry again between this one and the, then the light. The light version comes with forty one feet of wire and plus the seventeen foot ground radial in one length, and it's maybe okay. a little bit yep. extra. What we did yep. is. That requires Chuck to measure all that stuff and wind the wire up. We quit doing that because for production purposes, it's just as easy and not any more expensive for us to put in a 100-foot roll of wire. There you go. Eric, so, I used my Aries on 160 meters with 41 feet of wire, made a 2,400-mile QSO that might have been luck, but it was confirmed by LOTW. Is that sideband awesome. or is that digital? Uh, 41 feet, what's that? That's just over... 13 meters yeah that's pretty good yeah I, I, I've got that sort of space in my backyard did, uh, uh, well, did you need a tuner for that you probably did you do need a tuner and and mm. you'll need a tuner with the Poseidon as well that is exactly correct I'm glad you said that because I forgot to mention okay. that what, um, what kind of tuner are, are we talking like a 3 to 1 tuner in your normal 7300 or are we talking a 10 to 1 on the Poseidon a 3 to 1 tuner should get you pretty much everything mm -hmm. um on the random wire, I th I'm spoiled because I don't have a three to one tuner. I use a LDG or or a flex tuner, depending on what radio I'm using. So I'm not 100% sure on the nine to one. I think a three to one tuner would probably work. I know it will on the Poseidon. Not sure about the Aries. So the Pos the Poseidon and the Aries uh, tuners, the one that we a spoke about before. A ten to one will get the... you where you need to go on either one. Yes. Yeah, and the mercury dipole that we spoke about earlier, that's a resonant antenna. So that's you can resonant. cut that mm -hmm. for yeah. So so that's right. good. Right. Uh, well you can use you can get ten to one in the um in the seventy three hundred uh, for instance. You just got to in emergency, emergency mode, mode. mode low power, yeah. yeah. Right. So, you know, that might still work for QRP. Uh and what was the other one? With the Apollo. The Apollo. 
And that's now, the all of these names, tell, tell us the story quickly about all these names. I, I think that was an ape thing, ape or Steve, and they decided we're going to name them after Greek gods. So <laughs> I think ape has a punch list of every Greek god in the pantheon, and he keeps coming up with names. I wanted to use something like Thulu or the old ones or something, and he's like... <laughs> The ape tenor. The ape tenor. <clears throat> That's the flat one. <laughs> well, it started with the with the original Artemis, the original NFED half wave. So it yep. was Artemis, and then they there was design changes with the winder and a few of the bits, and um, so it got renamed to Apollo, and we've just gone from there. So you've got a vertical, you've got a random wire, you've got a linked dipole, and then you've got the NFED half wave. Correct. Mm -hmm. And this is the 49 to 1. That is a 49 uh, to 1 wrap on that guy. Mm-hmm. Um, what else is uh, what else have we got with this one? Same winder, everything else is the same. Um, I guess it just still, sort of depends on what you're going to be doing, isn't it? Well, yeah, it does. The sauce is in how you're going to wrap the toroid, whether you're going to do a you oh. know a nine to, a nine to one trifiler or whether you're going to do a 49 to one. Um, primary and secondary wrap, or whether you're going to do on the Poseidon a bifiler wind, and uh, other hey, than Chuck? that, yeah, it's basically the same hey guys. parts. Hey, Charles, <laughs> the winder is exactly the same on all of mm. them, and again, so, good build construction. Yeah. So our whole our whole dream was to we had a dream. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? <laughs> we have a dream, and, and it was to build all of our antennas off of one winder. And that took a little mm -hmm. while. I come back to these guys, go, we gotta put a hole here and, and it's like, what why we gotta put a hole there? Mm -hmm. I go, just trust me, dude, we gotta have a hole there. So we just kinda kept it kept evolving until the uh this is the newest the newest winder is the one we're using now. The first one was a little bit different. And uh this one's just for, a lot sexier looking. For the Artemis, yeah, there were some mods after the Artemis with the winder. Yeah, That's we fixed right. some things. There was a couple things that got left out of the original. They were they were there and then somehow in the printing process they got left out and that was just the mainly the only thing that really got left out was the uh, the little square parts for the BNC when you push it in so it doesn't turn. That's right, I remember that. Mm -hmm. It's still what, um, what kind of success have people been having with these antennas? Have you heard much from from people out in the field? Hamstick has been blowing it up in Hawaii on the thing. That guy he shoots right over my house when he's on. One night I was trying to get him and. He's getting five nine, you know, plus ten from you I've know, got Ohio a and stuff. <laughs> here. I was, I don't know what he was on that night. I was he on was, my nine to one, I believe, it. or the repeat. I don't remember which one I was using. And he was I and I think he was on the Aries, or maybe the Apollo, I don't remember. That's been like a year or so ago. But I, I he's always tearing it up with him well, from Jason, Hawaii. And can, and Hawaii for you. me is a I mean, I'm 2,000 the, miles farther uh, away than Chuck is, so... I'm not sure what kit Jason's talking about there, but I gather that they're all kind of roughly about the same sort of weight. They right? are. I mean, parts are parts are pretty much the same outside of a few things. Like, I've mm -hmm. actually got... Uh, I don't uh, I need to go get my scale, but uh, I don't know what that... Whatever a pound is in grams, I can't math it that fast. About uh, 1,100 grams. I'll be right back. I'll right. get one. Hang on. Yeah. No. I usually say kilo. it's about dub, double. Yeah, it's about uh, no. Half a it's kilo. It's about yeah. It's about just under half, or just over half. Sorry. Yeah. Probably six hundred grams. So I was gonna, yeah, about six hundred grams. That's right. Yep. Yep. Um, so you do spare wire as well, so you can just buy the wire if you want to yep. get uh, and wind some. You know, uh, you know, roll your own and do your own. Exactly. Um, especially on the. Especially on the NFED, and um, if you want some extra wire for the Lynx dipole as well. Thank you, Jason, for the five dollar um, super chat mm. for the car. Here comes the money. So the, the <laughs> so Aries. I was getting ready. That was it. That was it. okay. I thought we were going to dance. Was... The Aries. The Aries is two hundred and sixteen yep. grams. The whole kit. The whole built antenna. All the oh, wire 200, on. 200 grams. 216 right. grams. Box weighs more. You're giving me 0.98 pounds. Uh, I'm shipping this <laughs> with 0.98 pounds, which is well, like about 600 grams. <laughs> well, you got you have to account for the box. 
you have to Which count for the, maybe the box grams. that the wire comes in. You're coming in with 100 feet of wire. This is not 100 feet of wire now. Oh, that's a built one? Okay. This is totally built. I'm going to need you to recheck those numbers then. Ask him how many we have in stock. Ask him. Ask him. So the next question. <laughs> All the antennas are showing add to cart. How many have you got in stock? <laughs> Chuck does just-in-time manufacturing so a lot of the <laughs> stuff is, it, it is so he has a lot of kits pre-built kind of but not specific <laughs> to each antenna uh, chuck is the only one who actually knows how many we actually have at any given time so it weighs <laughs> six point six point or seven point six two ounces is what it weighs okay that means nothing to me in metric but that's fine um chuck my shipping weight is a pound son because that's what you told me. Well, I always <laughs> give you grams, so maybe you I always tell you grams because grams. I know, but the, the website makes me use pounds. Okay, I'm tired. I'm tired. Do you bust those moves out on a Friday night? Because <laughs> it does. <laughs> oh, that's no. dangerous. Don't put your back yeah. out. No. Um, uh, how do you, um, tell us a little bit about the, uh, the measuring of the wire, uh, truck as you showed so me at the factory. Is that, is that, you, a, is that used, a secret? I used to get, a, I used to get a lot of exercise measuring wire <laughs> and I just string it across my yard and wind it. So I was getting, I'm really good at winding wire on our, on our, uh, our winders. You're welcome, mm -hmm. Kyle. So, but, um. Now we just, and, and Teal wanted to do this since, you know, he put our first few kits together and uh, he wanted to do this from the start and it really works good. We just give you a hundred feet of wire now. And yeah. the, the, um, Poseidon is seven feet of wire at leftover when you get done. So there's enough somewhere enough in that area, room for roughly a little bit of room for if you measure once and cut twice. Right. Yeah. But nobody, I mean, there's a lot of companies out there that sell you an infed half wave that's only good 20 and higher, right? And then if you well, want to do 40 and if you want to do 40 and higher, then you have to buy, buy extra wire. Kit. We don't we don't charge you extra wire. That's one of the well, you'd, that... you'd rather have you'd rather have that extra length as well because you know um, you're going to have different results. You know, slightly different results depending on where you're setting it up and all that sort of stuff, right? So I, I took mine to. Um, to uh quartz fest with uh teal was down there i set it mm -hmm. up on a 12 meter pole about as high as it would go ran it over to my trailer and tied it off to a bungee cord so it was up high at the trailer so nobody would run into it laid it on the ground and all my swrs were like 1.1 1.2 for 40 20 15 10 on the ground <laughs> yeah you just lay on the ground well the closer to the ground the better usually for that for the uh, infant half wave Mm -hmm. you mean, so we're looking I've at the build instructions some companies, for the on some companies say you can put it up in the top and but i mean why would you want to hang the heavy part at the top of your mast does this mm. make sense you know which one's this for this is for the end this is this is no this is the um no no this, sorry i was talking about what this, what you were talking about mercury hanging, oh oh yeah the hanging yeah, from the top of the pole. yes yeah, so, some companies i mean you can hang the, the the winder part at the top of the mast but for mm -hmm. me, it's like, why do I want to put all the weight at the top of my mass and now I have to put my coax all the way up there too mm -hmm. versus just so hanging the wire off of there? It seems you can get like away to, with a narrower mast if you, can do it the, if you do it that way anyway. Yeah. It seemed like yeah. that this idea was good too. So when I set up my um, NFED half wave, mm -hmm. usually what I'll do is if I've got limited space, I'll run my wire, I'll run my... Um, uh, feed point down the bottom of the mast and then run the wire up the mast which means that I have to take time to secure it to the mask unless you want mm -hmm. to flapping around in the wind heaps see and then and one, one thing that, that and I don't know if even uh, Jim knows about it but see I've been doing this for a while this is this one here is kind of the same thing that I printed this is for my this is for my carbon six what's neat about this this fits in it's exact same size to fit right inside the end of the carbon six same with the one that we sit with the Poseidon. It'll, it'll sit inside of a 10 and a 12 meter pole. So it's always there. It just stays inside the 
because there's enough room at the end there to, to just drop that in, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Oh, inside yeah. the end of it. See, I could do something like that with my uh, with my fiberglass mask. I don't know what that inside diameter See, here's, is. Here's a carbon six, right? And probably inside. I don't have it in here. But that's what this goes to. This one goes in here. I did something different the last time I did this, but this will fit right inside the carbon six. And then you, you never have to take it out. On. So you just leave it in there. Mm -hmm. I had something else. I was doing something else with this one for some reason, but uh, like my carbon six is is if you if you noticed, it's pretty thick at the top. That's because I got rid of the first. The first two sections are inside this section. Apes do not like carbon fiber. That is a true statement, Don. Well, it's it's kind of a. Oh yeah, it's I take this on. It's the controversial. Time. What it is is when we start talking about verticals, you don't want to use carbon fiber because even if it, if even if you can get it tuned up right, it's going to throw all your all your lobes off. So you've got your your links in the mercury dipole here as well, written out for your different bands. Yeah, I did. Uh, I did, I went through it and did everything for the measurements <clears throat> for those three bands. These will put you mm -hmm. right there. I, I I think it says add a couple inches. Yep. To, for adjustment. But if you and cut them at those links, like uh, nine times out of ten, it'll be right. Yep. And you can always, if you're adjusting them, you can always fold the wire back on itself and and twist it to until you get it right and then you can cut it right so like that yeah and i it just went easy you just cut little you just tie little knots nice little knots and stuff i, I got mm -hmm. a little precise because when you're in the fire service and you tie knots you're supposed That's to dress thing. your knots yep so that comes from that and we don't use these little b and c's anymore are they uh the little banana plugs mm -hmm. i do prefer these and somebody else said that we argue about this no i, I agree with them but the ones we got, we were, I was finding some. I mean, if you're buying a package of these for yourself, you'll have plenty, right? When I buy back, when we were buying a package to put out, say, 50 antennas, I find like 10 of them that won't go together. They're, the solder hole in the back is not there. It's filled in. So we do went the, to a little, a little bigger one. Do these rust? Those are they're uh, like brass. They won't rust. They're brass. Okay, because yeah, because I've seen um, some who build link dipoles will use like I don't know what plugs they'll use. They might use like random banana plugs, but they rust, um, so they have to use and swap out to gold plated. And when I say rust, what happens is they you set up their antenna. Yeah. yeah, they set up their antenna. Um, it rains, and then they pack it up, throw it in their backpack, and then oh, forget yeah. about it. And then yep. it slowly over time will rust. <laughs> So, so it was uh, Bill Ham Radio Tech Tectonics. He's the he's the one that said we dis we disagree, and we don't really disagree. I agree. I like those better. It just they were harder for people to do. <laughs> Look at that, a pork chop too. <laughs> Very good. Um, so, yes. is there anything <laughs> that you want to say about your antennas apart from buy them, buy them, buy them? Sure. Um, buy them. I think you guys buy them. <laughs> You guys said stuff earlier about how we're there for support too. We don't just sell you the antenna. Um, we worked with somebody here recently on the Poseidon. He was having a little little problems. I don't I don't know that he really had a problem other than he was looking at his SWR and it was kind of off. And I I think I have really good soil where I'm at. So my my sometimes my figures might be a little bit skewed as yeah. far as how well, well they it, work. It's a difference between and, and Chuck's making a great point here. That's exactly right because I did some testing today and I'll have a video coming out probably this week on it. I'm getting about the same results SWR wise on the Kronos as I'm getting on my Poseidon, but my results do not look like Charles's results. Chuck's got apparently some awesome dirt where he's well, at. When, when I put my yard, we have gophers here really bad. I live you saw Hayden, there's like field behind me, there's a creek off to the mm -hmm. side of me. Mm -hmm. And so when I put my yard in, I put a bunch of chicken wire underneath my sod and then threw the sod on top of it. It's now oh. gone, but all that metal's in the ground still. I don't know if that helps anything or not. Yes. 
Yeah. So it's... the the new ham question does the Enfit halfway require an unan, but uh, it already has one on it, which is the forty nine to one, right? It's all part of the antenna. Comes with the yep. kit. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you don't need anything extra. Now you will have to <clears throat> wind the toroid yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is probably, I guess, Chuck, would you call that our most challenging wrap or the? No, I think the, I think the Aries, the nine to one. The and nine only to one because, with the tri-filer. Only because when I built my first one, I was trying to film and, and I was building over here and, and trying to read over my shoulder, you know, and I switched them and I built it wrong the first time. But what? This is news. I know. Yeah, I, I never made screwed a, I made up a video on it. I made a video on it, dude. I guess I didn't watch the part where you screwed up. But, uh, yeah. It's just, yeah. It's, you just have to be careful when you're putting the wires together. Make sure you get the right the right colors to the right colors. And don't cross your wires. Yeah, you don't want to cross wires. And they just barely fit. I mean, we're using the biggest wire we can use in those and still get them to fit in the in a one, mm. 140. So you got three there, right? So you're doing... Yeah. yeah. Yep. And our newest ones come with gray instead of black because we couldn't get black. So you just replace, put the gray one where the black wire mm. was. So now, Colin Frank says, this. Colin says, why don't they just heat shrink over them, then no rust? Uh, well, the, the point of the link dipole is so you can disconnect them and reconnect it depending on what band you want to operate on. Yep. And you, so and you couldn't tell from that disconnect. picture, but there was heat shrink on those. Mm. It was just the same color as the wire. Mm. The, the heat shrink we give is black. It's, it's actually better than the <clears> stuff <throat> I had on those. So, so what, what, uh, what new antennas have you got on, on the go? I'm playing with a Delta Loop right now that we we're thinking about coming out with, but I'm not right now. I'm not very happy with it. I don't. Uh, we're trying different wines, different. Uh, we may try different toroids. In fact, nobody's really seen this except Ape and I. So is so is uh, is this is, is a special the... wine for it? Maybe that we might use. Oh, exclusive. And so you you and I you and Ape are, a, the, are the main main the developers, right? Yeah. yeah. This is yeah. a two to one, and what's cool about this one? You check your SWR, and you say two to one. This is a two to one, but this blue wire. This is for the um, the delta loop, but this blue wire is made to shorten or lengthen the winds, take winds off, put them on to get it to tune where you want it tuned. I haven't tried it yet, but uh, that's kind of it's kind of in the work. I don't. I just haven't the problem like uh, right now I've got the delta loop up on 20 meters and it's cut for 20 and it's multi band. It's not very good on 40. And but on 20 it's like really close to my yagi. Um like within a an S unit or two sometimes most of the time like one or two S units. And my yagi's three elements. It's 46 up. feet. Pop a one in the chat if you uh, want the next uh, coffee and ham radios antenna to be a moxon. <clears throat> Because I think uh, it's already that made, would be yeah. a real challenge to make a kit and ship, wouldn't it? <laughs> actually, actually, it's already done, but it's for, for two meter for two meter for two meter. Two oh, meter okay. Well, that's small. Yeah. Okay. Fair that's enough. Small. Now, yeah. Somebody, yeah, shipping uh, on anything bigger than two, it's like because what would the next one six six meters wouldn't be too bad, <laughs> but the the length of the the you know the the spreaders would be kind of long. We know what the cha you know what the uh, challenge is. The challenge is just trying to build a moxon using that using your um, your winder here. Yeah, <laughs> and try, and try and incorporate that. Changes. Yeah, yeah James Riley it. had a good. Uh, <laughs> you could do uh, it. He didn't really ask it as a question, but it rolled by. Um, he mentioned he's looking forward to trying out a multi band. James, the Poseidon is multi band. Ten. And so is the Aries. And so is the Aries. That's Alberta. true. Yeah. You could you mm -hmm. could do the Aries as a vertical, but it's harder. Yeah. I mean I've used the Poseidon 10, 12, 15, 17, 20, 30, and 60. And 80 not recommended. Don't do 80, but I did it and it'll do it. I almost lit I've, a tree I've, on fire. I've well, I've actually <laughs> talked on it on SSD and it, it it's it works like eighty, it's short distance. I was doing how, digital, so how did yeah, you light your tree on fire? Too much power? QRO. Yeah, well, I, on 80 meters, 100 watts on digital, you had the toroid up to 190 degrees centigrade. I mean, it was just, and I have a thermal camera. I don't have it here, but this I, is for dawn. I have a thermal camera, and that, that thing was just like a little sun out there hanging on my tree. Mm. Like, Did you, I hope you shot a video. Gonna, that would be my, very. I've got some pictures. Show this, show this to Don. How much? Um, he's, talking, he's talking about the Chucky Hex. And this is. 
This is just a template. And it's going to be made out of five millimeter how much, aluminum. How much power have you here? got, Jim? Uh, fifteen hundred. Can you uh, do a video running fifteen hundred through it and see how long it lasts? Uh, I suppose. <laughs> well, it'd be entertaining. I, I've got about seven. I got about seven fifty because the amp is on one ten. It's not going to get up to fifteen hundred. But oh, okay. Well, seven fifty is all right. That's okay. It, it'll get, get up in the six and sevens. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Make sure you. Film the thermal camera, uh, but also have an actual camera there to show well, the smoke I would, leaving I would the capacitor. Love to have, yeah, what I want to have, I want to, I want to have a uh, a thermal couple on the toroid, oh, live okay. feeding the data while I'm playing with it. Because right now I, it's manual. I have to go get the thermal camera, walk outside to the tree, and aim the thermal camera at the at the winder and see what. Is the, the RF going to mess up the thermal thermo couple probably, though? Probably. It might yeah. also... Uh, that many watts? Might, yeah, I would imagine it will. Yeah. You might, uh, depending on how close you have it, it might also detune it a little bit too. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Which is why I haven't pursued it, because I'm like, this just, that's not going to end <laughs> well for something. But, uh, <coughs> Everyone loves to see smoke, unless it's your own. Right. <laughs> well, this is R&D. I mean, these are company right. parts. So, you know, if we... we did, Ape and I did run it, at we've ran the official Poseidon, I think, at 250, 200 to 250 digital. Of course, and not while, recommend. This is not recommended. Don't don't not, run it at this sort of power like level. It's like putting the reactor at 110 percent. It's possible, but we don't recommend it. Yep. Then yep. Ape, Ape, and Chuck and I have different opinions on this than Ape does. But uh, <laughs> Ape had some negative results with his uh, 80 meter exploits with the Poseidon. So. He turned his toroid brown and uh, melted all his zip ties and melted a groove, I think, in his winder. So, what, um, which what really toroid weird is Jim what didn't toroid burn using? any of his nope. with as much power as he ran through it. Yeah. But I had um, 250. Now, anyway. granted, Ape did, Ape did do 80 plus watts on FT8. Oh, wait a minute. That's less than Jim. That's right. I forgot. <laughs> what, uh, what toroid are you using? Or is this so an eight question? The, the Poseidon is a 130 uh, 52 iron core. Okay. Hard to find. So how, how did you how did you come to so how did you come to picking uh, this again these are ape questions and right. not this here is to answer them. Ape and Chuck questions here. I, no, this is this Chuck question. And, ape and, and Chuck and I double, work on this stuff. Do you double do you double not double stack them for extra power or no. Nope. So this is what most people use. This 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 is a two. Is that what it was? I, Chuck, I don't. This remember. is this is I what they recommend. Two, yeah. Now I I took this out and I used it with our and I happen to have some of these green ones is laying around and and they powdered goes, well, iron. The, nobody. It's just it's the it's the mixed two, powdered okay. iron. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so. I had these, it, and I wasn't real happy with it because I went out and I couldn't, I couldn't tune twenty with my seven ten. All right, twenty meters is if I go out and do a POTA or soda, twenty meters is the best, one of the best bands, and has been the best band for a long time. I mean, some of the other bands are good too. So I had, I go, hey, Ape, hey, what do you think? I've got this green tour. He goes, nope, we're gonna get, we're gonna get slammed. People are gonna hate us. Blah 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 blah. I go well. Let me let me just wind it. I'm I'm in, I'm in. I'm, I've already winded like ten different. You know, I did this one. I did I did one on a on a forty three, and it wouldn't. You know, it's just a, a regular forty three, which is what we use on mm -hmm. our other antennas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't it wouldn't tune up either. And I'm talking to I'm, I'm sitting at, at HRO one day, and I ask them people in the store there, what what do you guys? What would you like? Would you like something that you could tune with your your seven ten your seventy three hundred? Or something that you might have to take an extra tuner with you, and they're like, "I'd just rather take my seventy three hundred or my seven ten or my DX ten. So I go out and try this thing, and I'm and I start showing Ape the things. He goes, "Wow, that thing's actually really good." <laughs> and then I start using it. We got to do some testing. So Ape, you know, he's going to finch test everything. I test it to see if it works. I take it out and use it. I'm making a contact to Scotland on the dang thing one day on a Poda. That was actually on this red one. And I was, on 12, meter. You're I was on twelve meter. was on twelve meter on it. That's awesome. Because it wouldn't tune twenty, and I have, I hear this guy. I'm like, that guy sounds a little, kind of an accent. I bet you he's DX. I call him one call. He gets back to me, gives me a 
five seven or something like that. And then as we're talking, I said, "Yeah, I'm out portable." He goes, "You're out portable?" And I go, "Yeah, I'm just out with battery power." And he couldn't believe it. I don't know what he had. He he may have been doing all the work. I'd love to be a but, fly on the wall in those R and D meetings between Chuck and Oh man, uh, sometimes Chuck and I. It goes on all night sometimes, man. Daddy and Daddy <laughs> talk very late some nights. So, <laughs> so, so I finally do a bunch of testing, and then then eight test it. And he goes, "Wow, this thing's pretty. It's pretty efficient, you know." And he's like, "Well, this thing's not bad. It's a little bit less than the than the forty three, but we get all the bands with. It. I mean, I get all. I get eighty to six with it." Oh, that well, actually, that's the other thing we didn't even mention. So we were saying that these are HF antennas. You can on some of them get six on them too. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what? Our Poseidon is the Poseidon it, works on six. The Poseidon is like perfect on two meter with no tune. Yep. At least at my house, and I think the guy that was having problems with his being high on some of the bands, he says this thing's perfect on. Uh, he said on two meter and seventy. I've never tested on seventy. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it works. I, I one day I guess I need to get my two meter radio out and just see if I can make contacts with the. Guess Poseidon, what I have know? hooked up right this very second, Charles. Oh, you have something, huh? Do you have something hooked I, up? I do. Let me fire up Antscope because it's hooked up to the official released Poseidon, and we can look at it live. Hell, nice. So basically, that, that's how Hayden. That's how we actually came up with that green tour. Right? Is I just took it out. And, you know what? Ham, what's ham radio about? Experimenting, right? If you uh -huh. listen to everybody tell you that oh it won't work and you don't try it, then you never know. And now we know. So no, it's a it's a it's a challenge. If someone says it won't work, then what you do is is you make it work. <laughs> or yeah, prove that it Ape, doesn't work. <laughs> Ape took a lot of flack because of what we use, but we've proven. I mean, one guy's like, well, you need to go out and field test it. And I'm like, well, what part of field test do you want? I, I field tested it. It works great, you know? And somebody just, somebody went on their first boat of the day, made a bunch of contacts into Europe with it. So I forget who that was. Do you remember who that was, Jim? Mm. It was his first time. It was his first POTA he's done. And he was happy because he made some, and if you guys want to know if that antenna works, the Poseidon, watch watch any of our antennas that Michael K, KB9 VBR has used. Oh, yeah, and, he was and see, and up. see what he pulls out of his, when he does a wire antenna, see what he pulls out of his bag. Mm -hmm. right, so so one of our antennas it, so. usually. So I'll put, the, I'll put the link into the chat for where you can get all of these antennas. So that let's is the have wrong a look link. at this. Please delete that. Please delete that. Please delete that. Don't go to that link. That will Why make not? your eyeballs fall out and lose the war for the allies. Wrong link. <laughs> What's the right link then? Coffee Post and the right radios, link. Coffeeandhamradios.com. Oh, well, don't, you need your redirects fixed. I can't I'll fix, fix it, it, otherwise it would already be fixed. I've been trying to train <laughs> Chuck for two years not to give up. There we I go. Got it right. I got it right. There now, we go. There we go. The other, so, we're, happy, we're, Jim? And listen, guys, don't, don't go there just to, to toy with me. We're changing e-com here in the next couple weeks. You need to go to coffeeandhamradios.com because that will direct you to the correct site. That's why I don't want anybody going to that other one because I knew some point it would change. Chuck, you mm -hmm. got some weird VHS effect going on on your screen. It looked like a tape wasn't tracking or something. It was weird. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going right. to drop a. I'm going to drop a link to, if you guys want to see how this antenna works. Now, Michael, hit hit tune, hit tune, Jim. Go uh, sorry, go on, Chuck. I'm just trying to get my computer back here. I thought I was connected. Maybe I didn't. So this is That's the wrong port. This is Michael's video that he did on the Poseidon. And when I asked him specifically, I go, can you hang it from a tree so you can show people that you, <clears throat> that you can hang it from a tree also and not have to have a mast, right? Michael runs 50 watts. Watch this, watch this thing. I'll post it in here a couple of times. And, and then look at his, when he gets done, look at his DX that he got that day. He's in, and he's in Wisconsin, so I, he's not really East Coast. He's close, but you know what I mean? It's not like he's in New York or Florida. But uh, did you go all the way to two? Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Middle of two meters, <laughs> 2.3. Uh, actually, it's lower than that. Let's zoom in. So here's two meters, S slightly over two to two to slightly You over. could use it in a pinch, right? Yeah. What about and UHF? Then, and then on UHF. Just depends on where you're at. It's under two 
or mostly two. below two. That's also probably going to change depending on your length of feed line that you're running to it and all that sort of stuff. Right, yeah. So I'm hooked up right now with RG8X, but I've only got about a 25 foot run from the shack to the. Which is, which is what I use most of the time, portable. So. Yeah, well, it's what almost everybody uses. I mean, who's going to want to run yeah, LMR for? I guess I'm going to take my A57 out and see how it works. Call some, I go, I'll take it out and do it up from uh, Big Hill. So if we look, can, you mentioned six earlier, Hayden. Let me. Yeah, can you change six? <clears throat> six tunes up no problem oh it skirts three doesn't it yep slightly over three in a couple of places 3.09 mm -hmm. where's 125 uh, where's 125 that's that's the important one well unless you want to go 313 <laughs> only if you're in the US but yeah oh sorry and then on 10 <laughs> meters if I remember right this thing is a beast on 10 Oh, it's like really good on 10. Yeah. That's where we were having problems when um, um, Jason was using it at uh, at uh, Dayton. Or not at mm -hmm. Dayton, but at, um, in Florida there. And I'm like, how was the how was the tune on it? He goes, it wouldn't tune. I'm like, are you kidding me? And then he checked and he goes, oh, no, it's good. Because <laughs> on a Yesu, when, you, when it's good, it just doesn't tune really. Yeah, I think if the SWR is it. below a certain threshold. Yeah. To show 220 real quick and then we'll have to wrap this one up because I think uh, oh. speaking of Jason, uh, he's probably on soon. So, And I'll lose or, all of my or viewers. Or Tank is. No, Tank was earlier. It was either 30 minutes or... Oh, it is started. almost 7. I, I forgot we're later than you normally stream tonight. No, I'm not late. You can blame Daylight Savings. This is good. We never checked 220. Yeah, the rig expert doesn't really mark off to the 220 band and I don't remember all of it. Yeah, but there you go. There's 220 to 228, and I know it's in there. So you're looking at three to four. Hmm. Cool. And, and this is a this is an antenna that's made to tune. It's not. It's supposed to be tuned. So yeah. Now Chuck uh, Hayden asked not a resonant. question earlier, and, it, and yeah. it was a Chuck or an ape question, and I think it's more of a Chuck question. On the Aries and this one, a three to one tuner will pretty much do the job. Oh, yeah. You, you want to make sure them? you use I a choke on the Aries. On both. The, the Aries okay. will all, I, I've tuned every band pretty much that I ever used on, you know, six through, shoot, I think it'll go 80 at least. It, I don't know. It might do, I don't know about 160, but I mean, it wouldn't be very good there anyhow. But yes, it'll, it will tune um, with your, your internal tuner. But you need to run a choke at the uh, yeah. feed mm -hmm. line. A CMC I, I did a test on this on the Nelson's antenna a long time ago, and without it, it wouldn't tune everything. And with the choke, it would. So it was getting some feedback into the into the radio. Mm -hmm. um, the reason we changed to 100 feet on the Aries, it used to be 75 feet of, of wire, and I used to measure it out. But we wanted to change to 100, so we just went ahead with the 100. And there's enough wire in there to do a 71 foot. You can do a 71 foot extension, and that's what I have for mine. That way you can, if you want to do 80 and, and, and the low, you know, 40 and 80, that would work better on 40 and 80. That way with the longer wire. Mm. With the but you don't have to use quarter. it all the time. Yeah. Mm. All right. Thanks, boys, for going mm -hmm. through the, uh, the Coffee and Ham Radio's an antennas. I've put the correct link Thank into you. the chat Thank so you. that Jim... Uh, the redirect Jim works, get... they, but they <laughs> screw it up on Square and show the actual link and... Yeah, I just uh, it's going to change where it drops to, so I don't want anybody using that link and they can't find us. Coffeeandhamradios.com. Cool. I'll always go to the right one. Coffeeandhamradios.com. So um, get yourself a, a easy to build HF antenna. Um, now <laughs> I'm glad that you're here, Chuck. Because you asked we... about what we have in stock. We have a lot in stock. We, we're one uh -huh. of the only antenna companies out there, that, especially kits that hasn't been out of. We've only been out like once or twice. Have has uh, but only for a couple of days. Talk, talking about talking about though your team. Have you heard that thing about Jim? What about him? Yeah, well, see, I've been trying what to now? say to people for weeks.